Welcome back gamers, Rick here with uh, Game Trade Media for another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. As you can see right there, oh is it right there? It is right there. I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. And uh, yes, we are continuing with our Star Wars Legion uh, path of painting. It's, yep. taken, it's taken a long time, but we're getting there. We're, getting, we're almost there. We're almost, almost there. Uh, so today I'm going to be working on the barricades, so yep. maybe I'll, they'll look halfway decent, maybe? I think they will. Yeah. I think you'll do uh, a good job on them. What you, are you doing today? Uh, I'm finishing off the bases on the uh, ATST and the speeder. Nice. I'm going to do the windows on the speeder okay. and the ATST, and then I will do some more assembly. We've got uh, two more speeder bikes, an ATRT, uh, seven rebels and seven stormtroopers left okay. to assemble and to still get painted. And as you can see in the front here, uh, we've got lots of uh, the miniatures that from the core that have already been painted, which will look yep. amazing. So, uh, yep, so that's all the stormtroopers 14 stormtroopers, two speeder bikes, Darth Vader, uh, Luke Skywalker, the ATRT. Uh, we have seven rebel troopers completely finished. And then and mine. Then Rick's at the back. <laughs> One day. Yes, they will be One complete. One day, people. They will be complete. With any luck, it'll be before the 22nd. Yes, that was, that's where the, all the luck is. <laughs> all uh, luck is. So um, you mentioned that... I, I might just get rid of this now. With the barricades that come yep. in the core box, yep. um, doing some sponging to these, is that right? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's kind of uh, sort of what we've okay. approached everything with. And I've got the um, dark stone, which is what I'll be using. Sorry. Yep. There we go. Back and forth there. There we yeah, go. So there's the barricade right there. So you um, you prime that with the uniform gray. Uh, right? Gray, yeah, and then a little white uh, over top of, like some of them you can see will be a little darker. Yep. And then, yeah. Okay. So, I guess one of the questions we might want to. Ask us, um, do we want to put any colors onto those? Um, like the control panels on the back? The control panels we'll probably do after the sponging. Okay. But if we wanted to have any sort of colored sections on there, do we want to put do any red like on the um, oh, yeah. things, or or should we leave them fairly generic? Well, let's take a look at this real quick. On the box, they're all unpainted. So the box they're all unpainted. No, that doesn't help you at all. It doesn't help me at all. No worries. But I do, oh, have, well. I do have some sponges, <laughs> and I wanted to ask you, Yep. Your what your thoughts were as far as like which sponge I should use. Okay. All right. So I don't know. <laughs> this is gonna be a trick question. I'm I've sure. got this one. Yeah. Right here. Okay. And this is the uh, like a sound baffle. No, no, it's just a sponge. Sponge. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just an amusingly shaped sponge. Yeah. And I figured if you know this one would be more not not so much for detail, but maybe this one right here for detail because it has a lot more ridges to it. Right. Would that, you think that would be... Do you want to use the whole thing and just dip it in the paint like that, this? Yeah, it's like that and then... Right? Go ahead. Absolutely. But do you also think that maybe if I use this one because it has a different color to it, might make it easier? It might, it might change the color of the paint you're sponging on it. All right, so which know. one do you think? This one then? I'll go with this one. <laughs> All right. I would actually recommend this one. But Okay, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. So, uh, for those folks who are watching us on Tuesday, we got the, uh, the bases painted with the desert yellow, for the uh, ATST and the um, speedo. But it took quite a while for it to dry. And that's really just because I put a bit too much paint and a bit too much water on. So, that's why we're coming back and finishing these off today. I want to say hi to Carl and uh, Gerard for joining us. Hey, Carl. Hey, Gerard. So, and oh, with, so with these, back to here. sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna, and just yep. over like just the high edges. Just the high edges. Just just where just uh, think about. Uh, so these things obviously get moved around. Yeah. They're not permanent fixtures. Mm -hmm. So think about when they're being picked up. When they're being moved around, when they're being the where they're stored doing. and shipped, and okay. when they're being shot at. Think about all those things. Okay. Where would where would the damage occur? And uh, that's always your, your best, the sort of the best approach. Think about okay. uh, where that sort of stuff would happen. Okay, for the for the bases uh, over the desert yellow, 
And I dry brushed some uh, Moon White from the Vallejo Game Color range. And now I'm hitting them again with some uh, Ivory from the Vallejo Model Color range. Fairly light, starting at the center there. Spinning that around. Hope nobody's getting dizzy. Watching that. Oop. Ah. I was kind of lucky that I did this. So I can Wait. show people how to correct mistakes. Oh, <laughs> yes. So there, I didn't brush enough paint off my... Um, uh, oh, I'm going to take enough paint off my brush and left myself with a nice big streak. I'm just going to go with the overhead cam there. Yeah, see that bright streak there. Uh, which, of course, doesn't look particularly good. I come, come in with a uh, slightly darker color, which is dark sand. I'm just going to sort of dab this over and around the area. Sort of take some of that out. Fairly sort of random patterning because you don't want it to look regular. And that's what a straight line gives right. you. It gives you that regular look. <clears throat> so uh, one of my questions to everybody out there that's watching is, uh, though we've been working on all this Star Wars Legion stuff, is it okay, is it safe now for me to start talking about the Star Wars Rebels finale? <laughs> <laughs> because I gotta get it out. I gotta talk about this. My God. And he can't talk about it with me. Right. I didn't watch it. So, hopefully, some of you have watched it. It's. It was. So so otherwise, cool. he's gonna burst. I'm gonna burst. <laughs> <clears throat> and what's funny is I, for, for those of you that have watched previous episodes. Um, I do talk about the Phoenix Squadron, which is the characters from Rebel Ali or, uh, Star Wars Rebels um, a lot because they are the squad that I use when I play uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Okay. The phone app. That's the phone app, right? Yeah. Because they're awesome. Okay. Who are they again? Phoenix Squadron? Phoenix Squadron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got Hera, Kanan, um, Shoot, uh, Sabine, um, Ezra, and I'm always, I'm, I always, Choppers, the droid. I can't remember the big, the big guy's name ever for some reason. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, something Keb or something like that. You say Kev? Keb? Keb, Keb, or something. Like that. I can't remember what his name is. Kevin seems like an odd name for a Star Wars universe. Gerard says, I'm only a season behind, but go ahead. I'll la, 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 la my way through it. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so the things I, I will say in regards to the finale of Rebels is um, you learn that they exist through the entirety of New Hope, Empire, and Return of the Jedi. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and the... Oops. Great. The storyline <laughs> that you all are familiar with is kind of goes up to um, Rogue Squadron, right? So you know that they're at Ro Rogue Squadron, but then at the very end, they kind of talk about a uh, time lapse goes on and says, you know. You mean Rogue One? No, no, uh, Rebels. Talks okay. about after, you know, that you would think that the, the battle would have came to Lothal after they basically beat the Empire off the planet. Yep. But it never comes because of the Battle of Yavin Endor and all that stuff and they talk about all that and uh, it just tells you that there are so many more things going on in the Star Wars universe than just the Skywalker storyline right you know yep. which is so cool and because you know uh, Star Wars Rebels and um, the Clone Wars that was on uh, the animated series that was on TV there for a while too uh, is all linked because um Rex and uh, uh, Ahsoka are in are in the Clone Wars, and they show up in Rebels. And you learn that Rex did fight at the Battle of Endor. Okay. Which is super cool because that means yeah. that the bearded guy that's probably one of these 
All right, founder yeah. technically is Rex. Okay. One of the bearded <laughs> miniatures that are that's on the field right now that would be could be Rex. This guy, I think. Is it that one? Can you zoom in on that? Yeah. yeah, that could be Rex right there. there. It looks just like him. And if that's the case, that's a huge potential spoiler even for this game. What? And it ties all of it together. Like the Force does. It binds us. It binds us together? Yeah. Like duct tape? I don't know about duct tape. That's gross. Duct tape can't bind you together. <laughs> I've seen those movies. Zeb. That's right. I should have said that. Zeb. Zeb? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, Carl. A uh, question from Gerard. He says, why do you use high water glasses? Bad experience with low bowls or a brush resting opportunity? <laughs> uh, these? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the big reason is because they're, they're available here in the studio or in the, in the, in the office uh, building. And I just grab them. Um, but I wouldn't use them as brush resting opportunities because I get yelled at every time I leave a brush in there because it will bend the tips if you yep. leave it in there too long. Yep. Uh, and when we first started the series, uh, get uh, Kurt would get on me about Good. doing that. Good. So, yeah. Personally, I like the uh, the satisfying tink tink tink. Yeah, that is kind of satisfying. Yeah. That means miniature painting to me. Want to hear that? I like it. Yep. <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, that you know, everybody has their preferences for lots of different things. Yep. So. Some people use coffee mugs. Yeah, solo cups. Found the solo cups. Oh, I wish I had some Han Solo cups. <laughs> that would have made this much more entertaining, I'm sure. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so now I've gone and put all the, the tufts on there again. Um, we, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, zoom back out a little bit. Yeah, going forward and so we're using the Army Painter uh, Battlefields XP tufts. These ones are the Wasteland tufts. Um, they're super cool, uh, very quick and easy to uh, apply, as you can see there. So now, last thing to do, or well, second to last thing to do, yeah, reveal the flight stand. Ah, yes. We finally, peel this off. I was looking at some other miniatures yesterday yeah. that we will be painting after Gamma, and after okay. this is all over. Okay. And uh, they had the clear base acrylic for the miniature, so that you. Oh, okay. But it's not a, for anything like this. It's not a Star Wars themed game. It's right. It's a whole different game. But I can see av after having seen those ones on their bases how something like that would be really good for these having the clear acrylic for the terrain. Yeah. Changes because, like it was said in the chat before, um, Justin or uh, Josh just said, uh, <laughs> "Look at Dave acting all toughed over there." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good um, work. I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it, Johnny. Um, anyway, you were saying. Yeah. So seeing those, knowing that if I if we did a. Uh, a Hoth battle scenario with these miniatures. Yep. They're all desert, they're all Tatooine based. Yep. So they look uh, a little awkward. Yeah. But a clear it's acrylic okay. would be a cool. I was thinking about it the other day, and it, like my personal preference is very definitely for uh, like picking a, a basing style. Mm -hmm. uh, because most of the time, honestly, mm -hmm. most of the time your miniature is going to be sitting on a shelf. Right. They're not going to be on a tabletop. Um, Says you. <laughs> well, unless you're playing like all the time, yep. thirteen hours a day. Oh man, that'd be the life. It would be. But unless you're doing that, you're going to spend a lot of time <laughs> sitting somewhere else. Uh, so for that momentary inconvenience, sure, yeah, uh, or sort of break in reality when you're focused on you're going to be focused on the uh, the gameplay at the time. Oh yeah, that's just my personal. On it. I agree. I mean, that's that's true. Yeah. So after I do the sponging here, you think I should go through and put like some silver like blaster marks, uh, kind of like 
No, I don't think so. No? No, I think it should be okay. He says that, but... It's more because I'm just a little bit worried about how it's going to look. Have we met I'm just me? kidding. <laughs> Carl says, just a bit of trivia. Zeb was based on concept art of what Lucas envisioned for Chewbacca. Oh, yeah, that's right. If they could have figured out the mask stuff, that might have been the Wookiee. Oh, wow. I'm going to go, oh, and nod. Well, Zeb, As if I know what it looks like. So Zeb is like this big, he's a big creature, kind of like Chewbacca he's is, like yeah. but he's got more of a, uh, he's got, like, he can use his feet like he can use his hands. Okay. He has, um... So he's a bit more simian. Yeah, but the face isn't... Right. Is it kind of flatter? Yeah. Okay. He says, as it, as uh, he, he has actually probably seen this character, and didn't realize it. Right. <laughs> huh? No, me? No. Yeah. I'm just talking about the. Uh, I, I was thinking about the um, Ralph Macquarie concept art for um, the Millennium Falcon. Is, I, I believe it is the Ralph. Uh, it's based, sort of based on that. Yeah. Right. Cause, yeah, that, that face is a lot flatter and a little bit more. Um, I can't remember the name of the dog. Pug. It's, it, I guess it's kind of pug like. But yeah, if you have like a long haired pug. I, the thing is, I don't think Zeb actually has hair. Okay. It's more, he's got more of like a, I want to almost say like reptilian kind of uh, skin tone. Now you're completely throwing me. Yeah, I know, I'm the worst. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll show you after, the, <laughs> right after this so you can be okay. like, oh! Oh, that. 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 Makes no sense. Okay. <laughs> Josh from Mini Painting Studio says, the clear basing can be an issue with super glue since you get frosting sometimes around the edge. You can use other glues, though, that being said. Yep. Yeah. He also says that he misses yelling Johnny. So, for uh, Mini Painting Studio... Here, this one's for you. I'm going to yell from the other room to make it seem more like the old days. How's that, Josh? Is that working for you? <laughs> Sometimes the Johnny can't control the camera, though. So next week, what are you up to? Who? You. Well, it's not like I haven't said it today. Well, I know what you're up to. Oh, you mean I got to climb way out there, too? Lead you through the conversation is what I'm trying to do. Oh, today? Okay, so next week, um, I will not be here in studio. I will be at Gamma Trade Show, which is the big uh, board game industry uh, trade show. And this year, it'll be held in Reno, Nevada. All right. Um, and while I'm there, I'll be doing interviews with a bunch of the publishers. Because Gamma is one of the shows where they announce a lot of the games that'll be coming out for 2018. Right. It's also first looks at, you know, some of them that are kind of ready. Okay. Uh, so we'll get some first looks at some games, which will be a lot of fun. And uh, there might even be some playing of a couple games. Or a game. I can tell you right now, there will be one game being played up there. We'll be doing a uh, live stream of the new Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Ooh with uh, the creator, cool. and um, that should be a lot of fun. And uh, on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be doing a live stream where Renegade Game Studios will basically be taking over our, our stream to do their Renegade Radio. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Renegade Society Radio. Or they're, they're, they're like live stream broadcasts that they do every every week, I think, or in on special occasions when they have like special interviews and guests and stuff. Okay, cool. So um, Sarah Maybe. and Scott and them will be taking over and we'll be using, uh, we'll be broadcasting on the Renegade Game Studio uh, Facebook page. All right. So that'll be a lot of fun. Excellent. Yeah. And, uh, but other than that, um, I've got appointments with Cool Mini or Not, um, uh, shoot, I, I need my schedule. 
right. on my desk. <laughs> it's, it's like 24, yeah, yeah, if you don't mind, it's, it's right on my desk. 24. 24 different companies I'm talking oh, to. Wow. So we'll okay. get inside and scoop on some stuff. Johnny's running over real quick to, to grab schedule. my schedule. That'll be cool. And, um, yeah, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we may even see some stuff from uh, Fantasy Flight that is, uh, you know, Oh, for, uh, for this expansions on this for, legal, uh, yeah. for like second wave, Maybe. cool. That would be sweet. Right, thank you. Uh, so I've got Renegade is going to be sitting down doing an interview first thing on Tuesday, followed mm -hmm. by Fireside Games, who makes like Hot Shots and Here Kitty Kitty, which is a lot of fun. Then I have Atlas Games, which makes um, man, what is the big one that I've done with them? It was the uh, it was the our, the role playing game, but they do a lot of us. They have a thing called the white box, and I think that's okay. what we're going to talk about, which is literally a, a white box that has all a bunch of components in it for every anybody out there that wants to, you know, give a shot at designing their own board game. Okay, right, yeah, cool. Um, then it'll have uh, Mr. B Games, Osprey Publishing will be uh, up there. We'll okay. talk to them. All right. Um, games Workshop, Whiz Kids. And I've got Arcane Wonders. You're talking to like everybody. I'm talking to everybody. Everybody. Uh, Steve Jackson Games. Uh, Asmodee is going to take up some time as well. Yeah. Uh, USAopoly. Cool. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> USAopoly's got some good stuff too. I saw at Toy Fair that I couldn't take pictures of. Yeah. So that means that whatever we're going to be talking there, they're going to bring and we can show it. Oh, cool. Uh, Excellent. Especially just to give you a little, a little hint. It's. Some probably some Infinity War stuff. Okay, nice, cool. So uh, while you were talking, I just yep. to turn that off. Is everybody happy with the stripes? Carl, are you happy with the stripes? <laughs> Leo is happy with the stripes. I think Carl's super okay, cool. happy. Excellent. So I'm going to go over and do. So it looks pretty good in that stand there. So I'm going to take that back off its stand, so that I can do the uh, windows. Uh, Ashley wants to know: Did you cover up the firing arcs on the ATST? Uh, actually, on the basing, uh, by putting the, the uh, sand down on the bases, um, and this is essentially the same thing, um, what I did was actually went and, actually, let's go to the close cam, uh, should be able to see it here, is before I put the, the sand on, I cut a little notch in the, the base edge. So that'll be where the um, where those arcs are. So if it's something between those two, okay. it's um, yeah. So yes, uh, I did cover them up on the the top of the base, mm -hmm. but made sure that they carried down on the side there. Nice. Um, for the uh, ATRT, uh, what we did there under the close cam as well was they painted on where those. Well. And if you flip it over and look at the bottom of the base oh. itself, you can see the arc. No, that, those, aren't, that, those aren't the arcs. The, so these right here are not the same? Not, no. Oh, okay. Well, my bad. So Disregard, yeah, Rick doesn't own nothing. Yeah, because <laughs> that would split them into um, six segments. Well, not if it was just this one and this one and this one and this one, right? Yeah, but it's not, it's not where they go. Oh. Trust me. I do trust you. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if you see it, see it on this, it's got the same pattern, but the point, this point here, mm -hmm. it's where it comes through, doesn't, doesn't line up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, well, I apologize. Don't listen to Rick. Rick doesn't know what he's talking <coughs> about. Um, doesn't, not, sometimes you do. Sometimes, but not on Saturdays. Star Wars Rebels, you know. I do. Tons about Star Wars Rebels. I really do. <laughs> uh, then after USAopoly, we're going to be talking to uh, Cool Mini or Not, or CMOD games. Yep. And then Mantic Games, which did All Out War for the uh, uh, Walking Dead miniature game. Yep. And then Greater Than Games, then Calliope Games, then USAopoly again. And the reason for that is because we're also going to be talking to Project Raygun, which is another company that works with the USAopoly okay. uh, to design some really cool games. If, if I remember right, they are the ones that actually were the, the brains behind doing... Uh, the thing based on the TV show or the movie. Okay. Um, so that 
company will be there. Looney so, Labs, which is a Baltimore locals. Okay, so you're flying all the way out to Reno. To it seems to be the only place <laughs> we ever talk is at cons, even though they're just down the street. Right. Um, Capstone Games, okay. Fames and Cosmos, which is a, a really fun board game company. Geek and Sundry. Okay. We'll be talking for, to Ivan Van Norman about International Tabletop Day. Cool. And then uh, Cheap Ass Games, and finally Aries Games. So a lot of cool game companies will be represented in there. Excellent. Yeah. That's going to be huge. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, too, uh, we'll, we'll be doing a Pathfinder uh, second edition playthrough, which will also be kind of interviewee because we're going to be asking questions about the differences between first edition and now the new second edition uh, in regards to character builds, uh, uh, combat mechanics. So we're going to try, you know, ask all the questions that you guys would have or you know, in regards to that game. Excellent. And, of course, Renegade Game Studios uh, taking over the airwaves and stuff right. one, on Wednesday night. So a lot of cool and fun things. Yes, sir. And that's not even counting the, like, the dealer hall. Even though right. they, it's not a dealer hall, it's just all the publishers are set up so that the, the retailers can walk through and see yep. uh, a lot of the product that will be available for the year, maybe make some pre-orders or whatever with, through their um, distributors yep. uh, and stuff. So it's a lot of interesting stuff. And yes, I will take pictures. I know someone in the chat mentioned that we should take pictures and stuff. The things that I can take pictures of, I will, yep. and we will get them posted and you all will be like, oh my god. Oh my God. Yeah, like I always get. Excellent. That's cool. <laughs> and you're taking Johnny with you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, oh. Johnny is going with us. Poor Johnny. Yeah. So next week, it'll be me. It will be you and here. And Leona. And Leona. And Tuesday, we have Jake Landis coming in. Okay. And uh, Jake, is, is, uh, his specialty is what? Uh, his specialty is uh, awesome paint jobs and terrain. And then Thursday, we've got Brian Delaney. Brian Delaney. Brian in Delaney. relation to um, the comedian John Delaney? Uh, I don't believe so. Oh, okay. Well, that sucks. But I could be wrong. The John Delaney is hilarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brian Delaney's pretty hilarious, too. Yeah. I don't think he's going to turn it on for the, for the, the show. show. Yeah. Mm. We'll see. <laughs> so but yeah, so we'll be working on terrain next week. Okay. John? Um, can you hand me the, the rule book that's sitting up there for, the, for this? It's right on, underneath the, uh, yeah. yeah. And here's one of the reasons that terrain is such a uh, interest to this game is because right in the back of the book itself, it talks about model terrain. So in the rule books for Star Wars Legion, they want you to be building, you know, scratch terrain, and like you said, yep. one of the ones that your uh, episodes next week is going to be uh, building terrain from household items or, or scrap. That, that kind of thing, yeah. Right. Yeah. Things that things that uh, aren't sold as terrain pieces. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be working with a like a, a building made from a junction box, a right? Electrical junction box. So that's going to be pretty cool. So yeah. yeah, there's lots of cool stuff on there. Uh, so in the rule book, they even talk about terrain and doing scratch builds are um, can be a lot of fun, especially when you have Dave and his guests coming in to show you just how easy it is to find something just around your house in your garage, yep. uh, in the basement, wherever. Um, that sort of thing. Yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. I was actually at uh, uh, not last night, but the night before, I went to AC Moore. Okay. Yep. And I picked up some uh, foam and um, uh, you know glue sticks and everything to do another terrain. Oh, um, cool! A different tra another terrain thing. project. Yeah. Excellent. Because I'm I'm working on a tavern for D and D stuff, and I want to do another piece. I brought some other foam terrain in that I had purchased from somebody at one of the local game stores during yep. one of their um, flea market days. That okay. They have. Sure. And somebody came in and they had a bunch of foam terrain that they had built. And it was like ten dollars for a nice little piece. Yeah. And I picked up two of those and uh, brought those in for doing photo stuff with. And I think even some of these would look good on those. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so the uh, the thing is, I had never done that. And I, right. as far as doing train building, even in, coming up through school yep. and doing art classes, never did that kind of stuff. Right. You know, if it wasn't you know chalk or <laughs> pencils or 
watercolors. It was you yep. know, something that you did. So. Right. So okay. This is going to be a lot of fun, and then watching you guys do it is only going to give me more tools for my toolbox when I'm working on mine. Yeah, it should uh, should definitely do that. There'll be a lot of things that we'll be talking about, um, things to think about when you're building terrain, uh, making your own terrain, and uh, talking about materials and uh, things you have to consider with that. Uh, so it should be good. Yeah, we're excited about, uh, about getting stuck into some terrain that it's going to be specific to this project, and uh, there's going to be one by the person who wins all yeah. the, the painted stuff that we've done. So that, that just added into the, the big uh, contest, so not only are you going to get all of bundle. wave one, you're also going to get some terrain. Yep. Which is really cool, not just these barricades I'm ruining. <laughs> <laughs> they're not ruined, but oh. Oh, yeah, they're not good. No, they're just fine. <laughs> <laughs> they're all good, they're what do you think? Did you go overboard on the sponging? I probably did. That's the toughest part with uh, with weathering, any sort of weathering that you do. Um, it's always when do you stop? Yeah. And I don't know how to stop. And you, it's probably best to stop about two or three minutes before you say when do I stop? Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of it's a, it's a little bit of learning. Because I feel like besides <laughs> just using the weathering sponge, that these need more detail to it. Right. So where do you think I should go next? I would suggest. Let me have a look. <laughs> what? Yeah, go ahead. No, I think they're fine. Okay. Don't worry about that. Uh, probably what I do is a little bit of shading mm -hmm. in there. So if you got um, some of the uh, like the army painter uh, dark tone. Okay. Yep. So thin that down, uh, right. and I'll just give you an example here. Just makes a little bit of under the camera there. Um, so rather than just grabbing the, the dark tone there, I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, gray here. So it's really quite thin. Okay. And then just paint that on the other side. Okay. So taking taking uh, the dark stone. Oh no, not dark stone. Not dark stone. No. No, no, no. I just do it with the with the dark tone. Yeah. Did you mix it with the gray? I, well, no, I'm just, I'm just, don't worry about how I'm doing this. Mm. <laughs> it's more that I had these on my palette. Okay, so stop just looking for things. Look I, over yeah. here, look over here. Yeah. Watch this. <laughs> so you want to just want to paint it into those areas, just thin lines underneath. That'll make those um, higher areas just pop a little bit more. So that's all you're trying to do. Okay. Those thin lines like that. You can do those fairly quickly. Just think of where your shadow is going to be. And All you'll right. see some, look at that, some extra boost. Okay. Cool. Thank you. No worries. But yeah, so I think it should be pretty good uh, with the, the terrain building we're going to do. On uh, the Thursday, we're going to be painting some uh, laser cut. MDF pieces. Oh, nice. Uh, and I th uh, we're getting those from uh, Death Ray Designs. Okay. Uh, who do they do some great sci-fi sort of scatter terrain? Oh, okay, cool. That's really good. So they're on Facebook. Uh, yep, they're on Facebook. Uh, I think uh, I expect it's Death Ray Designs. Death Ray. And uh, I think their website is deathraydesigns.com. Okay. But. Uh, I think they're down in uh, North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So. And those guys will be at uh, Adepticon okay. the following week. That should be cool. I'll be up there as well. Nice. It's all this crazy beginning of con season. James is here. Okay. Hey, James. He asks, uh, what do you think of the new Daughters of Cain? Uh, the new, all the new stuff for that? Uh, I think it's all pretty cool. I'm interested to see sort of exactly where they take it all. Uh, they've been doing a lot, dropping a lot of hints recently as well for um, like something to do with fish, whether it's a fish man thing or a sea elves thing. They haven't really said. So it's a games workshop uh, yeah. for Age of Sigma. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see how the Daughters of Cain fit in with the rest of the the, 
Elves. Are you? Elves with an A at the front. Really? Yep. So A E L. Yep. Okay. And anything you got, you can do to make it different, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, trademark. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, what do you think of the James? Do you have a particular favorite from the new models? Mike Webb is watching. I see you, Mike. Hey, Mike. We see you. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but uh, you know, anybody here ever watch the um, Gen Con sponsored live streams that they put on during Gen Con? Have I you watched it. No, because I've always been at Gen, at Con. Gen Con. Oh wow! Yeah. I probably could have. Ooh. When I say always, I haven't always been wow. at Gen Con. <laughs> but I'm guessing since they've started doing the live streams. Yeah, you've probably been. I've probably been there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't need to don't need to watch what I'm I don't know. It's watch, watch a digitized version of what I'm already seeing. But I think it's a great idea. Well, I, there's a good chance I might be one of the hosts. Oh right, awesome. For their live stream. That's cool. Yeah. Who backed out? Wow. Seven, eight other people. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What? I'm glad you went there first, Johnny. <laughs> Thank you. So mean. That's what the show's about, right? Uh, yeah. Painting minis and being mean. To Rick. Exactly. Just to Rick, not Just to me. Well, we ha someone has to continue the legacy of Kurt. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> that is true. He was, he was very mean to me. <laughs> it was good to see him again last, uh, last yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it was. Uh, he'll be at Gamma. So mm -hmm. we'll have an opportunity to catch up with him while we're there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, Gen Con and all those other spots. Origins. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> James says, Marathi are beautiful models, also the Malusai. I probably yep. just butchered those names. Nope. You're pretty close. Yeah, Mara it's, it's kind of an interesting thing they've done with Marathi. Marathi is a um, sort of a dark elf queen. Who's been who was in the old world, okay. like the old Warhammer fantasy. Um, during the end times, the world shattered okay. and has turned into these mortal realms. So, Age of Sigmar is several hundred years after okay. that. Uh, but she was st sort of still around or in hiding or she was captured by somebody. I can't remember the exact story. Okay. But uh, yeah, she's back. And you put her on the, on the table, you start her off as a model that's about this sort of size. Okay. But when she, uh, at some point during the game, as she takes more damage or gets angrier, mm. essentially she can ascend to a larger sort of demonhood almost. What? Where she ends up with a being a model that's probably about this sort of height, similar height to this. Jesus. And big, like snake tailed. Um, so she went all sort of rage monster on it. Crazy Medusa kind of thing. Okay. And the Malusai are um, snake tailed. Um, women as well. Okay. With, uh, but they're a little bit shorter, so mm -hmm. not about that sort of height. Oops. And knocking cameras around. Uh, and you, there's two different uh, variants. There's a close combat variant and a ranged oh, okay. variant. But they look pretty cool too. Very nice models. Okay. I'm going to talk about this for a little bit, but I've been watching the, what we're doing on the windows here. So I did a little bit of tidy up uh, on the, the black painted in the windows, and now I'm going along and I did a mix of the black and the blue. The blue I'm using is Imperial Blue from um, the Vallejo Game Pillar range. <laughs> oh. Just laughing at the chat. And uh, now I'm just going back with a sort of solar thing. But I'm not, uh, I could be doing this in a, like a series of glazes to build up a brighter blue down the bottom along here. I want to thin it out like that. Okay. But um, that can take a little while to build up. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm doing is going to give it a slightly more lined sort of appearance, but just to get that. 
window reflection impression. The next thing I'm going to do is mix in a much lighter blue. Yeah. Michael Patrick O'Connor says, uh, if you want mean, your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. <laughs> Love that movie. Flying Circus? Hmm? <laughs> yes. Yes, Flying Circus. <laughs> it's wrong on two counts there. Was it? Yeah. So D, that wasn't, that wasn't a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and D, it's not the movie that we're talking about. Oh, is it not? <laughs> My bad. You're terrible. Okay, so what I'm doing now is taking this mix of the Imperial Blue and the much lighter blue that I don't have the name for because it's a one off the label. And I'm just going to paint it in a line towards the bottom. Not right along the bottom, I still want to have that um, some dark blue showing on the edge. Yeah, it's mm. very light. It's kind of weird because, uh, yeah, it's very different watching it on the monitor than sort of seeing it up close here. Uh, James says that she was swallowed by Slanish. Oh, okay. And uh, he's thinking of adding some daughters to his order army. Oh, they are they for order? I didn't realize they were order. I would have expected. Uh, Destruction or chaos? I guess all the elves are part of order now. <laughs> Interesting. It's kind of funny because I haven't actually played Age of Sigma yet. Oh, okay. You know, that's been out for coming up on three years. What? I know. It's terrible, isn't it? I was a big fan of uh, the old world. Big fan of uh, Warhammer Fantasy. Okay. So. It was kind of a little bit distressing when it was destroyed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as like, so back to Star Wars Legion, yep. as it is what we are painting. Sure. What are some, like, uh, leader type characters or um, boss type characters you would like to see added to the, the roster of playable minis? That's a good question. Would I personally like? You, yeah. And everybody yeah. watching, of course. Oh, no. Right off the top of my head, I can think Rancor. Rancor? Oh, a Rancor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a boss monster right boss there. Boss monster? Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to see that too. A yeah. Rancor would be great. Uh, uh, crate dragons, I think would be kind of cool. Uh, the big dragons that are like the skeleton of the big... Oh, right, okay. Yeah, we talked about those. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm. There's lots... Yeah, I didn't even think about just uh, Star Wars monsters. Yeah. You know? Man. I don't know. I'm well, excited to see about how, the, how the, the bounty hunters are treated, I think. Right. That would be pretty good. That would be cool to see how they sort of uh, end up. Yeah, I look forward to seeing bounty hunters. I would love to see a Jabba. Okay. Yeah. Um, or even like uh, Jabba's skiff. Right. G Gamorreans, you know? Gamorreans, yeah. That would be kind of neat. That would be good. I think initially when somebody suggested to me, like, that, like, um, so obviously we go from, oh, that's a better shot of the, uh, the windows. Let me, uh, pull that forward. There we go. Actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I feel better about the windows now. <laughs> and I'm just going to rummage through my paints here for a gloss varnish. I'm pretty sure I had one. James says Jabba, Rancor, the, basically the whole Jabba's palace scenario. Yeah. yeah, that would be a really good one. Mike um, Webb says he wants to play an Ugnaught army. Oh, yeah, for nice. sure. Nice. They hit you with their suitcases? Yes. <laughs> I guess they're tool, they're tool boxes, aren't they? Something like that. So I, I would also like to see like <laughs> medical like medical units. Okay. Like, um, uh, like Jedi counselors or something like that that can actually 
do healing All right. on, on your troops um, or um, a medical droid. Like I'd, yeah. I'd like to see droids in general. Right. Uh, R2-D2, C-3PO. Um, uh, what's another good droid that would... Um, the medical droid? The medical droid, yeah. I don't know if, they, <laughs> I mean, they, I don't know if they'd be a, a, a ground and pound, you know, like combat medic All right. si uh, situation. But yeah. I mean, maybe. Oh, I think uh, it's the way that they're they're doing everything with the, the cards yeah. and mm -hmm. selecting different. You can select like X number of cards. Right. So they can appear as like a more a um, so like a war gear add-on rather than a miniature. But mm -hmm. yeah, It'll be interesting to this is to see that. What are oh, speeder bikes are also known as what? Um, out there for all of y'all watching uh, it's like uh, uh, they raced them like Han Solo was known to race these you know right it's like it's, I want to say it starts with a G it starts with a G I think um, all right James have a good day back at work uh, but if you all know what they were called the speeder bikes I don't know what he's rambling about the reason I say this is because <laughs> it would be cool to have an unaligned like speeder bike gang yeah. that aren't wearing, you know, the uh, scout trooper armor. It's just like um, unaligned uh, Okay, yeah. Biker gang. Bikers, yeah. yeah. That could be neat. The, uh, yeah, what I was going to say before is I, I think uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how they tackle the, like, the scum and villainy mm -hmm. sort of aspect uh, of it all. When I first heard about it, I was like, eh. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I, I think it's just going to be Imperial and Rebel. But when we're sitting there talking about it, and like, oh, can worry guards. And like, Klaatu and Nikto. And Ferrata. Klaatu and Nikto. Klaatu, and Nikto. Klaatu like, Barada, and Nikto? Those guys. Yeah. Those guys. <laughs> People call um, them swoop bikes. Swoops. Yes. Swoop. Swoops. Yep. Okay. Swoop racing. It's always. All right, good job, Michael and Carl. Wow, Michael and Patrick O'Connor is on board right here with yeah. Jedi are members of the Rebels, and the Rebels are terrorists against the Empire and need to be eliminated. Oh. I like it. I'm not so sure. Again, the Empire has cookies. All the Rebels have is blue milk. I'm sure there are plenty of it. <laughs> but you know they never specify what kind of cookies because that's kind of a, a big oh yeah you point, get there yeah. and it's those if it's oatmeal raisin I'm going back <laughs> <laughs> yeah they look like chocolate chip from a distance but when you get up close oatmeal raisin aha dark side <laughs> awesome so what do people think do they like the speeder happy with the speeder yeah the T-74 yeah. or T-47 T-47 my, dys my dyslexia kicking in again. <laughs> okay, oh. Let's get this. I'll do this. Something similar on the uh, windows here. Or should I just leave those? Oh, they look great. Unless you want to put like a little uh, yeah. general beers in there. <laughs> Paint a little face. Yeah. <laughs> general face looking at yeah. one and Chewy looking out the other. That would be awesome. Okay. Uh, we can put that over here now. <laughs> there we go. You got a great. Uh, Wampas. Ooh, Wampas would be good too. Yeah. For a Hoth battle. I've seen Wampas in a Tatooine battle. Ooh, they'd be sweating. <laughs> Michael Patrick O'Connor says white chocolate chip and macadamia nut cookies. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll go to board. the dark side for some yep. macadamia nut cookies. I'm on board. <laughs> Sign me up. Nice. I want to be the best pilot in the galaxy. <laughs> Awesome. I think that's just an untapped cosplay. It's just like someone who wears like a baker's outfit that just says Dark Side Bakery. Right. <laughs> and like, hey, here are the Dark Side cookies you've been promised. Has the, uh, has the little Imperial insignia. <laughs> yes. So. I'd like to see like uh, Kanji Club. Oh, and yeah. The, and those yeah. guys from uh, nice. Force Awakens. Uh, the smugglers? Yeah, yeah the smuggle, those, those other smuggling bands. Especially the, the the robot creatures or the guards that had the one like 
I, the red ones that, were, I, I don't know if they were Kanji Club or the okay. other one. What was the name of the, the monster? Which monster? The, oh, the, uh, oh, the big, the rolling yeah. tentacle monster of... The mm -hmm. Rath Rath Tars? Rath Tars, Or yeah. something like that, I think. Yeah. How about some of those? You know, you don't need some. You just need one. Those right. things will tear tear up some stuff right there. Yeah, this is true. So that would be great. Drew says, get some banthas and sand people. Oh yeah, sand people. Yep. Heck yeah, they they walk in a single file line. To the, the <laughs> to confuse you. Yeah. To the their numbers. Yeah. To hide the numbers. Yep. Yeah, that would be really cool. I'm pretty excited that we've got those done. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to assemble some uh, of the speeder bikes. Uh-oh. Michael oh, Webb posted in here, on the line, swoop bikes, you say, and he has a link. Oh. Dang it. <laughs> All right, so we'll check that link out after. Yeah. So if, for those of you that don't know, Michael Webb in the chat is the... VP of Marketing for Alliance Game Distributors, and a huge Star Wars fan. I think he's just teasing us. I think he's, yeah, he's messing with us. He's disappointed. But he also is a huge, you know, he's a huge sci-fi fan from what I'm gathering, yeah. and Western, and miniatures, and... <laughs> <laughs> he's a fan. He's a saying. fan. He's a fan. These barricades are coming along. And then it's... Oh, these what? are different. Yeah. They're both forward-facing and... They're both forward-facing, but they're, they're different. Uh, they're both different, different sculpts sorts. as well? Yeah. Oh, nice. And they're pretty similar, but there's slight differences there. Unless it's the... Uh, just to sort of get the right... Swoop bikes would be awesome. <laughs> and of course, Boba Fett. We've uh, we've mentioned that before as a as a playable character, and this would be amazing. Yeah. And then I, th I think of like all the other Jedi. You like know, every Jedi. Every other Jedi that has been on screen. Right. Kit Fisto, Mace Windu, Ahsoka Tano, um, Kamundi, all these other. Amazing Jedi would be great. Yoda. You see Yoda. You see Yoda. Do you, you know him? <laughs> mm, take him to you where I will. Drew says he's waiting for the all Mandalorian force. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I personally would like to see Phoenix Squadron. There was something I was reading the other day that said, um, I didn't realize, but that Boba Fett isn't actually Mandalorian. He's from a, a planet that was sort of controlled by the Mandalorians. Mm -hmm. Well, which is why he has Mandalorian armor. But is yeah. there something else I don't know? Well, I mean, if you watch <laughs> the movies, you know that Boba Fett is a clone of Jango oh, sorry. Fett. Sorry, Jango Fett, I think, was an You're elite right. Mandalorian. Well, yeah. No, no. The, I, I sorry, Jango Fett wasn't yeah. Mandalorian. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Don't lose your head over it. <laughs> uh, Punch you. Punch you really hard. I'm waiting for all the memory. Uh, Carl says, Michael E. Webb, are those scratch built swoops? Is one of these swoop writers Eric Estrada? <laughs> <laughs> ah. <coughs> Sorry about that. Woo, that was good. Eric Estrada. <laughs> I love this one from Drew. Klaatu, Verata, <laughs> Next time. That's close enough. I said the words. Words. <laughs> yep. Nice Army of Darkness reference, Drew. <laughs> yes. That's a good one. For everybody watching, I would like to say thanks to Johnny for running the close-up cam today. 
and uh, to Leona, who's rocking it back there at the switcher and everything. Yeah. How's it going back then, Leona? Feeling good? Feeling confident for uh, next week? Thumbs up. I'm glad you gave me a thumbs up because that little sort of, ah, meh, wishy-washy kind of hand signal wasn't filling me with confidence. Uh, we're going to be fine. We'll be okay. We're going to do great. We're going to rock it. Every few minutes, you just broadcast that one thing. We're good. We're fine. Everybody's, everybody's fine, fine here. <laughs> How are you? Yep. Carl says, judge me by my scale, do you? When 900 years old, you are 28 millimeters. You will not be. Truth. And pardon the bad impression of, of Yoda. <clears throat> nice. Good voice, Johnny. Good voice. Don't patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes. Okay. There's so many good potential playable characters for this game. It's like we've had we've been having fun painting these and getting to see all this stuff, you know, in advance and being able to show it to you all. But it just opens up a book of worms because you know I want Admiral Akbar, or you know his his ground pound equivalent. A book of worms. Yeah, because I hate cans. Okay. So the next most likely place for you to keep worms is in a book. Yeah, because there are bookworms. <laughs> Good night, everybody. When, when do you leave? When do you leave? For Monday morning. Thank goodness. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm still, I'm just sitting here thinking about uh, like the the droids, yep. you know, the separatist droids, yeah, and the, the Gungans. The trade, the trade Federation. Yeah. Droid army. Yeah. Cause you, I mean, could you imagine being able to field? Because those are going to be like twenty points or some stupid something. So you could field like fifty of those bad boys, and you're <laughs> <Right>. like, <laughs> or Captain Rex and uh, Commander Cody from the uh, the clones. You know, having a clone army. Clone army? Yep. Forget about it. I'd love to see a General Grievous miniature. Right? Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. That would be sick. Yep. Very cool. So many good opportunities. Yep. You put these models together last time, didn't you? The speeder bikes? I did. Perfect. No, wait, no. I didn't put the speeder bikes together. You did. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. Oh. He took them home. Oh, okay. And That's based right. them and stuff. Yeah. And things. I remember basing them, but... I feel like... As we're putting them there. together, it's like, oh, I can't remember I put all these things. So... I am doing it in my sort of typical approach where I'm not actually looking at the instructions. Yeah. Which is probably why the airspeeder's all jacked. I didn't put the SP together. Oh, did totally I do that? You. Dang it. That's totally you. You do know that I made a mistake not. in it, right? With the airspeeder? You don't need to tell me that. You need to apologize to the person who's going to win it. Well, uh, I do apologize. <laughs> However, uh, I am not a mechanic. You're not a mechanic? <laughs> I don't know the... You just play one on TV. Right. <laughs> if anything, you just say it's a mod. Right, yeah. <laughs> Want to make it look a bit more like a T16? Yeah. yeah, if that's a thing. Of course it is. Luke used to uh, bullseye wall prats. Oh, he's that's back right. home. T16, that's right. Thankfully, I finally able to get one over. <laughs> Drew asked, will there be a prequel era and expanded universe content? I'd like to see some of the Jedi Masters make an appearance from those periods oh, in the Star Wars yes. universe. That would be so cool. I, I, the answer to that question is I don't know. However, I am, uh, you know, subscribing to that same newsletter as everybody else. Yes, I hope that they do, because <laughs> I want, like I said, I want to see. M m one of my favorite Jedi's is Kit Fisto. He's the green squid-headed. Uh, Twilight. No, not a Twilight. Mm -mm. Okay. He has, like, squ like actually like squid tentacles, multiple tentacles instead of just the two. Okay. And. Um, he comes from a water planet, very much like Admiral Akbar, um, and 
granted, in the movie, he gets beat pretty fast by the Emperor. Yeah. But in the... Oh, and Shock T. Oh, she would be awesome, too. But um, in the Clone Wars uh, animated, there's a scene where he, like, is on the water plant, and, like, dives into the water and does this, like, force bubble okay. thing and just wrecks some stuff. With I was like, oh. <laughs> Michael Patrick O'Connor says, I want a Death Star Mini. That's a nice planet you have there. It would be a shame if it was blown up. Right. I think that would be cool. That, I mean, how big would that be, though, if you were to take a Death Star and equi uh, equate it to, like, X-Wing, you know, yeah. Fantasy Flight's X-Wing or uh, Star Wars Armada? So, You'd have to go with the mods, man. Yeah. It'd still be huge. It'd still be monstrous, yeah. yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, we're right down there to the end here. Uh, we appreciate... Everybody that joins us and watches and shares us and uh, you know participates in the chat and if you aren't participating, you know just say hi sometimes because uh, we know that a lot of people are also watching us and just keeping us on the background uh, because Dave's voice is so calming and uh, allows you to sleep. Yeah, it puts you in a state of zen. <laughs> um, as we always will say, this uh, uh, game will be available March twenty second. Yep. It will be at your local game store and. We would really like it if you go to your friendly local game store to get this game. Uh, support local, support the community, the pop culture and gaming community that we are all a part of. We're one big happy family. Yep. Um, so make sure you go to your friendly local game store and let them know that you would like your copy of Star Wars Legion uh, in your hands March 22nd. Two weeks from today. Two, yeah, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Where's my two dollars? Two weeks. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, also, uh, if you haven't entered yet to win this Wave 1 set that we have been painting, Dave, myself, and others that yep. have come in, we've had some really amazing guests come in. Great guests, yep. Yeah. And uh, so someone is going to win it all, and it's pinned at the top of our Facebook page, so go check that out. And also our Facebook group, Painting Happy Little Minis, if you're not a part of that. Yep, join that. Join, join that up. group. We'll add you in there and ask questions in the group. There's lots of talented painters. Uh, there's a lot, lots of beginners in there as well that ask questions and show off the work that they're doing based on what they're learning, and uh, it just all looks phenomenal to me. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's it's a great place to hang out. Yep. Uh, and on that note, I have been Rick, and I've been Dave, and we'll see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.